I'm just going to put this on you here. Okay. Okay. Like How you doing? Down, right? Nice well, to see you. I haven't seen you in a while. I'm all right. I enjoyed your first show with Dr. Mel last oh, year. Oh, great. I'm Saw glad. 25 times. I'm it was run every Tuesday night. I'm for glad us. somebody watches it. <laughs> Uh, Dennis, I know, I mean, it seems like I've known you forever. Uh, I mean, as long mm -hmm. as I remember. Uh, and I know recently you just started, yeah, well, let me just, for those who don't know, Dennis owns WREF radio station in Ridgefield, AM radio, uh, 850, I believe, yes. That's right. Um, and you just started up an FM band, is that true? That's true. You want to tell us about that? Well, we just started one on the FM band. <laughs> it's, uh... <laughs> It's in uh, Lakeville, Connecticut. It's on 103.3 on okay. FM. It covers northwestern Connecticut, beautiful rural area, and parts of uh, New York and Massachusetts. And it's at uh, it's called WQQQ. WQQQ. Wow. Something we hope people would remember. I would hope. What so, is it yeah. again? Uh, oh wait, hang on. <laughs> WQQQ. Q103. Q103. And it, its first day on the air was October 4th. Oh wow! So you just really did just just turn it on. Yep. Yeah. So that's over there, 103. That's over by what KC 101 and all those other. Well, ones. it's like between NEW and DRC and Y 103.5. Uh, okay. Um, now, I, I, for those I don't know if you watched last year, uh, we had a really junky microphone, <laughs> and Dennis had given us a microphone that was a prop and it was it was perfect, and until we could get the real thing, and over and the summer the we thing. got the real thing. And I forgot to bring you your prop back, but uh, what I do have is your book, uh, Rick Sklar. Oh, my book, yes, yeah. I, I wrote this book. No. <laughs> uh, it was something else that he, that he loaned me, and I wanted to get that back to you uh, as soon as possible. Did you read it? I, re I, I touched a little bit on it. I, uh, I love the pictures, and the <laughs> pictures are great. No, there's some pictures here. You can dance to them. Uh, yeah. No, there's, there's some pictures here of, of the mic that we have on the desk. You want to you want to get a close up of this? This uh, is probably a 35 year old mic. This is a classic That's radio microphone. This the yeah. RCA 77DX. Can we get a close up of this? This would be the uh, the mic that just fell off me. Look at that, man. Hang on, boy oh boy. Is this okay? <laughs> <laughs> did you get a close up of this? Yes, you did. Okay, I'm sorry. I I'm not. Uh, Anyway, this book. I should indicate with respect that this book was written by Rick Sklar. Okay. Rick programmed, for those of you in the audience who are over, what, 35 or so? <laughs> I don't know. A station I'm not called there. WABC, which before it was the vo vehicle of Rush Limbaugh, was America's greatest rock station. And <laughs> Rick was the program director. This was when rock was on AM. Oh, okay. When everything was on AM. So this was a while ago. But this station, WABC, had a 40% share of audience. 40% of all the people who were listening to the radio in mm -hmm. Greater New York were listening to WABC. 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 And Rick was the guy behind that programming. And so this book is written by the, the source. And Rick, I should sadly mention, passed away last year. Oh, uh, I but, didn't uh, realize that. Not from old age either. But that's another story. So Dennis, uh, <laughs> um, see you already mentioned October 4th. Um, I see some stuff here. You had some either training or schooling in studio engineering, is that? Well, in engineering, yeah. Oh, in, uh, okay. In, um, in building things, tinkering with wires and, and building transmitters. And oh, that's As you neat. saw in our garage that time when oh, we sure, came to pick up sure. the microphone, we were playing and tinkering with the transmitter for Q103. WQQQ. Hey, how about that? Um, so yes, I did have some training in that. Well, good. It's been a hobby. Oh, a hobby. Yeah. So I mean, I know you're the owner of WREF, but what is that? Do you go down? I mean, do you actually do you work at the studio, or or what do you? Are you just the owner and you sit home all day and just collect the money? I sit home and just collect the money. <laughs> do you have to do anything down? I mean, uh, at at the actual studio? Well, I do commercials sometimes. Oh, hey, look at that. And uh, we do an interview show with the first selectman of the town of Ridgefield uh, once a month, and we talk about town issues and town affairs, and uh, oh, she and I good. host that together. Well, that's, that sounds like, and that's on, that's on WREF. That's on REF, right. Okay. Uh, will you be doing stuff like that on WQQQ? No, we have somebody else who will do that. It's oh, kind okay. of far away to be doing that. No, I, I don't know if you mentioned this before. Where is WQQQ located? Lakeville. Lakeville is in Connecticut. Yep. Very northwest corner. Okay. Of Litchfield County. Litchfield County. Okay. Um, let's see. Did, did record Hop at WH in 1973? Oh yeah. Well. <laughs> that was. 
That's was about that a record year? hop. Oh, oh, okay. And that refers to um, a record hop that, I don't know if they, they still do um, uh, middle grounds here at uh, Comstock, right? That's probably for kids from Middlebrook. Well, at the high school, do you still do dances and... Uh, and um, head Make some noise, balls, everybody. Come like on, let, let people know you're here. You got you people yes, dance? Yes, we do. Hey, you people dance? Come on. what I say? I said? Be, I said this to them before the show. I said, be lively. Be lively. They have to sound like 200 people. Come on. 200 Make people. some noise. Let's hear it. Hey, all right. No one's doing it. Oh, well. <laughs> like I said, this is an experiment, okay? So. Oh, but a very anyway. successful one. Yeah. <laughs> you used to do record hops in high school. Wow. And so, and my wife and I had a record hop business in the early 70s, and we played music Maureen. that was, Maureen, sure. of course. And this was music that was, we played music that was way before our time. We didn't remember being around when, for example, In the Still of the Night by the Five Satins was number one hit in the nation. Mm -hmm. It was when rock was just branching off in one direction from the Frank Sinatra and Tony Bennett music that ah. was staying in the old in the uh, in the old direction and um, we weren't really we didn't remember those songs but those were oldies to people who were a little older than us and we did record hops and brought that music and played it uh -huh. and today we think of that music as oldies as if we were there but we weren't really there when it was current so right but okay. anyway we we did a record hop at Wilton High and I think that they expected us to be playing all the current music which was like Peter Frampton and Kiss and Ace Frehley yeah this is in yeah, 1975 well, 70, 70, or so. right right and uh, we were playing in the still of night and stuff for the five satins and uh, hmm. we um, we mixed in some Motown and actually it went pretty well the kids were interested in hearing music that was maybe 10 years old as opposed to current music. Right. I don't know if that would still apply today, but... Well, I don't know. What do you guys think? Yeah. Somebody, Mo come down. on! Come Mo on, make some Mo music. Down. You can stand up, clap, cheer, do something. Let us know you're here. Pearl Jam? I'm here. Yeah, Pearl Jam's popular, right? Yeah, cool. They used to be popular. <laughs> I don't know, Dennis. I don't know what their problem is today. Anyway, um, now I know, of course, your wife, Maureen, uh, and your son Brian and daughter Maggie right. and now do they there are they in the Wilton school system yes Brian's in uh, Middlebrook he's in eighth plays wow. Bob Warner so eighth then he'll be up here next year yeah great well then yeah. I'm glad we'll be in school together sometime yeah that's yeah. right you will be for a couple of years I guess right well for anyone out there who doesn't know I am a junior uh, mm -hmm. here at the Wilton High School can you believe that this man is a junior hey hey you know what can you do um, and Maggie's uh, <laughs> <laughs> she didn't have a mic, but a uh, girl in our audience just said, but he looks so much younger. <laughs> yeah. Um, and Maggie, I should mention, to be fair, is in uh, Cider Mill, and she's in fifth. And uh, as we speak, they just won. They played up. They played 12-year-olds in soccer in the what? Columbia, Connecticut tournament over the Columbus Day weekend, and they won the tournament. Wow. Playing girls older than Hey, congratulations, <laughs> Maggie. The Wilton Whippers. Definitely. Um, now, I mean, we were talking about, you know, your high school years and, 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 uh, and the hop back in uh, 73, I think. Uh, it also started out uh, to DJ when you were a teen. Now, can you tell us a little bit about that? Where did that take place? And, and uh, Well, it took place at Staples High School. Staples, uh, for those who don't know, is in yep. Westport. Yep. That's where both Maureen and I went to high school. Okay. And uh, after the basketball games, we would uh, we used to do record hops. Or actually, I didn't know Maureen then, but I did them myself. Right. And uh, with nameless people, and um, we played music after the basketball games and uh, did the record hops. I mean, that was DJ work, I guess, in those days. Yeah. So that was back in the '60s, and. I guess I just never followed that up because I never became a disc jockey myself. I've built stations, well, did but you I've never been a DJ. That's yeah. I was, that was another question I was just going to ask you. Uh, I know. I mean, you do own WREF, as we've said countless times now, uh, but you never did do anything uh, on the air, or you never did any DJing or, or or anything of the sort. Not really. You ever worked in radio before, even if it was behind the scenes? Mm, not really until the mid seventies. Hmm when I realized yeah. that I wanted to do that and I decided to switch from designing radar to doing radio. Yeah. Well, great. Um, Dennis, I mean, uh, how, how much time do we have? <laughs> what? <laughs> how many? Stretch. <laughs> He's going like this. How many times? What is that? Ten minutes. Uh-oh. Ask me about how, what kind of a business radio is. 
What kind of a business is radio? <laughs> it's a very... <laughs> It's a uh, very competitive business, and uh, it's a fun business, and it's probably um, changed a lot in the past 20 years because uh, just as research has driven the way television programs are done and the way newspapers are approached and written and the way headlines are written, so too has radio zeroed in on exactly what it takes to maximize itself as a business and people who remember the heyday of the old-fashioned personality radio stations. We're really stations, plugging this book tonight. Like okay. WABC, sort of uh, think it's too bad that it's quite so much of a business, but hmm. it is, and uh, that's the way uh, America is. And uh, stations like um, such as we have in Fairfield County are light years ahead today of where they were 20 years ago because there are now ratings taken in Fairfield County mm -hmm. and the stations are all concerned with maximizing their ratings so that they can maximize their revenues. And now how long ago did they start that uh, the ratings? I mean I, I know I had spoken to you about that one time at your house you were telling me about that. Oh yeah. How long ago did they uh, did they start rating uh, Fairfield County? Well they were doing some preliminary kind of rough ratings that weren't taken that seriously in the advertising community where the advertising's bought mm -hmm. back in the early and mid 70s. Mm -hmm. But with really it's in the past 10 years that it's really been focused on intensely um, by the ratings companies. Yeah. See I mean I think that is, is so interesting. I mean obviously you guys are watching us on public access now. Channel what 28. And uh, <laughs> I know hey hey <laughs> hey don't make fun of it cut it out. Uh, and, I mean, we don't have any ratings. Uh, looks where like we Channel are. 4 to me on my TV. It looks hey. just like Channel 4. All right. Or I don't you know if we can say that or two, not. didn't you? Well, that was the other guy who uses this microphone. Ha, ha, ha. We all know who he's talking about. Dave Letterman moves to CBS from NBC. Make some noise. We, hey, I invited you here to make some noise. <laughs> Clap or something. Anyway. <laughs> um... Yeah, as I was saying, uh, we don't have ratings here because it is just public access, but as they didn't uh, a few years ago have ratings on, on, what was it, AM radio or just Fairfield County? Uh, just uh, Fairfield County was not part of a major ratings area. Right. Then there's nothing to say that uh, the Nielsen's can't come on down here and, uh, right. and rate us. <laughs> um, how much time do we have? I mean, y for real now, honest, for those who are awake. <laughs> How awake are we in the booth? Somewhat, Somewhat he says. Um, that's our producer, Eric Madsen. He's in the booth talking to somebody doing something. Uh, my question was, how much time do we have? <laughs> I'll try this one more time, my third attempt at launching this question. How much don't Wrap it up. Do you have a little earphone like Clint Eastwood? <laughs> <laughs> I should. I should have a little earphone. Dennis, thank you so much for coming. Thank we were talking about having you, you last year. Uh, guys, ladies and gentlemen, Dennis Jackson. Yeah.